All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be tackling this really cool, fun loop. Super simple, let's get into it. If you wanna see the loop some more, you can head over to my Instagram, I posted it there, along with a lot of my other designs. You can go check those out and give me a follow if you want, and also send me your work if you do some of the renders from the tutorials. Now, just a heads up, if you wanna download this project file, you can get it on Gumroad for a dollar. You can see what I did in case you missed something or you don't quite understand something, you can go ahead and grab that. So let's get on with the tutorial. So, first thing we need to add is our camera. Simple as that, and we need to add a curve, and that would be a circle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the camera rotation so we know what's going on before we start doing anything. So we need to attach this camera to this circle. So we're gonna go right down here to the constraints tab. This looks sort of look like, looks like a slingshot, and select follow path right here on target, select your circle, and it snaps the anchor point to the circle. But if we click offset, the camera's not really doing what we want in terms of where it's pointing. So, click follow curve, and now it's doing that. So all we have to do is set up our camera. What I do is I hit R twice, and I just sort of fix him to where I want. With this particular loop, we don't need a lot of precision, so you can just hit R twice and move him around. So, now when we click offset, he is pointing and going around the curve. And so if we were to expand this curve like this, click on the camera again, it's doing what we want and I'm gonna move him a little bit more this direction. And as we're working, we can move it around uh, so that's not super specific. And it's going around just like we want, so that's perfect. And we're gonna animate this later. All right, now we have this. If you look at the, um, so if you look at it, it's kind of low poly. You can see how there's these bumps. And when we're inside of the camera view, you can the camera will see those bumps and that's not gonna be very smooth. So all we have to do is hit tab, right click, and subdivide, and we'll give this number of cuts, maybe 10. So now we have a perfectly smooth circle and our camera's gonna be going around it nice and smooth. But first hit control Z to go back. And so back to where it's the low poly, just four point curve. And I'm gonna move this guy around a little bit so we can give it some shape. So first I'm gonna expand it some more, right about, I'll make him about maybe that big. And I'm gonna hit tab and click any of these points, hit any of these points and just bring it down, bring it up and just sort of move it around so the camera can have a little bit of fun when it comes to actually this being an animation. So now we can play around with the camera here and just to make sure that it works correctly, it looks like it's working just fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and first let's make a duplicate and then click on the first one, and of course, go back, hit A to select them all, and we're gonna subdivide this guy just like that. And we'll name this one, and we'll rename that one one just to keep it clarity. And this one, let's go ahead and add some geometry to it to go around our camera. So, of course, our camera's being a little weird. So I want it to engulf the camera. So, click on the second Bezier circle, click on the curve settings and let's go down here to geometry and add some depth. So just like that, let's go into the camera view. Let's make the depth a little bit bigger. I think right around there looks good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the operator search. So edit, operator search, type in convert, convert to mesh. So now it is a mesh. So we're gonna decimate this. So let's go over to the decimate modifier, but before we do that, right click, click shade flat. So let's take this guy, go to the decimate modifier. And right now these are square, we want them to be vertices or sort of polygonal, polygon triangles basically. So let's go to the decimate modifier and bring it down to right about that, I think. That looks pretty cool. And let's also add a wireframe and click replace original on the wireframe so we can keep that piece. Now in the camera, let's go ahead, make this guy a little bit wider. I'm going to give him a 20 millimeter range and move him up. Now click on the camera and go back to the constraints and just sort of play with the offset and see how that looks. So that looks really good. It's looking really, really cool. So now let's go ahead and design this. So keep your offset here for the camera here at zero. And let's go ahead and add 
a light. So let's go over here, light, point light. And I'm gonna go to wireframe view so I can see where my camera is, so right there. And I'm gonna add this light and I'm gonna give it a constraint and attach it to the first curve. So I'll click on the light and we're gonna use a constraint right here, follow path, and we're gonna click one, boom. Now before we hit preview, let's go ahead and switch to the EV render engine and render it. So the problem, so our light is behind our camera. So what we can do is we can just go back to the constraint here and bring it forward just like that. So now let's start adding the shading. So let's go to the shader editor here. So click on shading, go to rendered, click new, and let's add metallic, boom. And let's make it really dark, like close to down here. Now we can't see anything. So our point light from my, from my settings, I'm gonna give it a strength of 100. So now it looks really, really cool. Let's add some fun here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a color ramp. We're gonna add a color ramp, plug it into our roughness, just like this, and add a noise texture. And plug that noise texture right into the color ramp. So once we bring it down, bring up the scale a little bit. Now you can see some fun happening, just like this. And so we have this, let's add a bump node. Let's plug this bump node into the normal and plug, and then also add the noise texture to the height of the bump node. So now we get this weird liquidy stuff. Let's put the detail up on the noise and bring the strength down pretty far down. So let's make the strength really, really small to right about there. That's looking pretty good. And we can play with the roughness some more right about there. Just play around with it until you like what you see. And I'm going to give it a little bit of distortion right around in this area. So now we have this. All right, so now I have this fun stuff going on. Let's add those red sort of dots you saw in that animation that gives it a little bit of pop. So let's take this base color here and bring it down some more and bring our strength of our point light up, say 120. Okay, so that's looking really cool. So what we need to do is go up here and add a mix shader. So in my X, mix shader, and we'll bring it up and we'll add an emission. So emission right down here and plug the emission into the second slot of the shader. I'm gonna make it red for now, probably keep it around that anyway, and keep it the strength at one just for now, but we're, that's gonna be upped fairly far once we go up. So what we need to do is add a color ramp so we can squash what's gonna, we're gonna be putting behind it to tell the emission where to go. So plug that into the factor. Let's add a Voronoi texture and a Musgrave texture. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two nodes and have them interact with each other via a mix sh shader. So let's just take these two, hit G to move them over and add a mix shader. So a mix RGB specifically, not a mix shader. We don't wanna do that. So add the color here, add the color there and plug the mix into the color ramp. So now we have this going on. Look, let's give the Voronoi a some scale right about here and bring the detail, play with that. And so we're gonna play with this here. So we have this, we're gonna take the color ramp and bring the black portion all the way over here, kinda like that. And then let's just play around and let's change this closest part here on the Voronoi to crackle. So now we have all these little dots going on and then we can play with the factor and mix it with the Musgrave to give it that sort of breaking apart sort of look. We're gonna bring the Musgrave texture down. So now you can see those little particles. Let's go ahead and make the emission. Let's give it a strength of 10. There we go. And let's bring the scale up much farther. So now it looks like these little cracking little particles we want. See, right, that's too much. So bring it over and now we have these little particles. So now we can actually start animating this so we can watch it move. But first, let's take this Bezier circle. So let's take our camera, go back to solid view, and I'm gonna, right down here, I'm gonna give it 120 frames. Actually, you know, I'm gonna keep it at 240 frames for now. Go up to your edit preferences and make sure in your animation tab that your default interpolation is set to linear. That's very important. So what we're gonna do is right here, you can see it's on frame one. 
hit the left arrow to go to frame zero, and that's really important for when we add motion blur. Normally, I would actually go to the end and go to frame 241 if you've seen my older tutorials, but we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna start at frame zero. So we're gonna do that, insert keyframe, and then click this arrow right here, go to frame 240, and on the offset, type in 100. Then right click, right click, insert keyframe. All right, so let's check it out. So now it is much smoother after we add that subdivision to the curve and adding all that stuff there. So now it's much smoother. We have this going on. We have our material, we have our lights. You can go ahead and you can play around with those quite a bit if you like. And yeah, so this is pretty much the animation. Now, one of the problems here is the point light. All right, so now that we have this, let's press play and our point light is gone. So we need the point light to follow the camera and we can't parent it because that'll cause problems. We want the point light to follow the curve. So if you go to the constraints, we can see the offset on that light is right here at 34. So I'm gonna keep it at 34. And so what we have to do is add 100 to that 34. So go to frame zero, right click, insert keyframe, go to the end and add 134. And what that's gonna do is gonna do a perfect loop around the curve and so that you don't actually have to start at offset of 100. You can start at any offset you want and just add 100 to it, and it'll go around that curve perfectly in a loop. All right, so let's go ahead and show you the mo motion blur really quick. So you can see it's right there. If you want to, if it's too much motion blur for you, you can mess with the shutter. The shutter of 0.1 is just no motion blur. You can have it all the way at one, and you get a really nice shutter. So that's pretty much the animation. I'm gonna show you how to export it really quick. So you can go to this printer icon and then go down here, save where you want this little file, switch to FFmpeg video on container, switch to MP4 and then on video codec H264 and switch to high quality. And then right up here you would render, render animation. So there you go, it's super simple. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.